Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Thursday, August 27th, and it's 4.04 p.m. And I'm sorry I did not get to all of my emails yesterday. And one of them, Tessa had sent me, um, of course, I probably everybody knew about it, but but I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know where you all live and what all you keep up with, but it was about Hurricane Laura and where it was coming in right at the Louisiana and Texas uh, where they meet right there at the border now uh, this I found one four minute video that's showing Sky I 13 captures flattened Texas homes in Laura's wake okay what what's happened now is okay it has come ashore uh, I was listening to one that had been live streamed for like seven hours and some and then they cut it off and uploaded it I mean I, I just think that's kind of crazy they they had to quit and upload and then start again but anyway um, that's just my opinion uh, this is, is pretty, um, not so pretty. <laughs> A lot of homes flattened, totally flattened right here in Texas, in Laura's wake. And she left me a comment that said she had sent me this video or sent me a, a video link about Hurricane Laura and that we need to be in prayer for everybody in its path well I hope that there were people praying and that will continue to pray I don't know the update on it I saw that it wasn't coming where I live and pretty much to be honest thought praise the Lord and didn't think nothing of it which I guess was wrong I should have made a video and asked for prayer but I don't catch everything and I can't I can't really catch everything I can't report on everything I think everybody knows that um but I did see where they were afraid they did not get enough people evacuated. So I look at this picture of these flattened homes and I wonder. Did anybody stay behind and in one of these? And did they know Jesus? So many people think they can survive these storms because they have all their life. They managed. In fact, this looks like a mobile home sitting here with another little building, maybe another mobile home, a small one attached to it. They're just sitting there and a porch attached perfectly intact do you think some praying was going on right there here's another one up here shaped like a barn that's more of like one of those aluminum buildings but right next to it looks like a boat maybe it's on its side but the building itself don't know if it's a home somebody's backyard building I don't know what it is but it's intact but the house in front of it and beside it and beside that flattened now only God can do that and then a lot of it's underwater these homes over here if people were in them they would have survived this one doesn't have much of a roof but the bottom structure of it is intact 
these homes are intact but right here flat as a board every board on the ground this house is intact so is this one I believe <laughs> prayer does that those who don't believe and stick around may end up in one of these flattened houses I mean there is a little bit here sticking up now if that was the believers home that's probably where they were hunkered down if they were praying there is a little piece of a home sticking up here the rest is flattened and yeah, it's sad to think, you know, well, what if we had prayed? What if 10 of us had prayed and it kept one person from dying and going to hell? Well, we can't think like that. I am sure there were other channels asking for prayer. And I am sure that God knows my limitations. But we can pray now for those who lost a house, those who lost loved ones, or even a pet. We can pray that they get back on their feet in due time, that God will provide in the meanwhile. We can pray those people in the shelters that I just saw a little footage about that are having, they're having to limit the number of people they let in. And there was a, a lady sitting there in like a folding chair. Like just. You know, I, I just don't know what I would do in a situation like that. You think about. Some people think about wanting to live on the coast and how wonderful it would be to live on the beach. Yeah, it would be wonderful if you could live in one of those areas where you can afford a home that is firmly planted in the rock. Or your home's foundation is the rock. And you keep Jesus the rock as your foundation. But to live in these low-lying areas where you can easily pull a boat into the water and stuff like that, I mean, I just think that's crazy. When you know what you're risking, every year you run the risk. So my prayer is that everybody who survived will be thanking God right now. And if they narrowly miss death, that they will turn to him as their personal savior. That is my prayer. And then he'll provide for what they need. Or sometimes it takes feeding a belly first. And then they'll listen. And they lay their head on a warm pillow that night. So... With that, I'll say, let us all pray that we may be counted worthy to escape all the things that are to come to pass. See, things happen every year, all the time. Death happens, hurricanes happen, tornadoes happen, fires happen. California has fires all the time. They don't think anything of it. Some places have earthquakes a lot, like California. They're not usually bad. They don't usually cause physical harm. They might crack your walls. They might break a little china, but they're not usually bad. So right now, they're not much of a warning. But it will happen. It will happen. And I pray that we be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass. And 
to stand before the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and soon coming groom. Are you ready? Be ready, brothers and sisters. We're going home soon, but then we won't be staying very long. We come back and help these people left behind. And that's where the multitude, too large to number, comes in. And we help harvest that wheat. That is the wheat harvest. We are the barley harvest. All right. With that I say, bye for now. I will talk to you later.